Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to just be demoing uh, some improvements to page speeds with GT Metrics. I just got 100% and 100%. Uh, it's usually, this is my homepage, which doesn't use a CDN. Uh, it's usually this last thing that people have difficulty with, this use cookie free domains option, uh, which essentially just wants you to use a CDN to distribute all of your JavaScript, your CSS, your images and stuff. Uh, the idea behind that being that if it's a cookie-free domain, then uh, the content should come faster because it doesn't have a cookie in the header. Um, this turns out not to be true, which I'm going to uh, show you here. But yeah, I just got 100 out of 100 on on both. The only option that I have that isn't 100% maxed out is Minify.js, which uh, it could be reduced by 1% and save us 61 bytes, but I don't think that's that big of an issue here. So my site is a WordPress site. It's pretty generic, nothing uh, super fancy here in terms of JavaScript, CSS, or embedded videos or anything. It's just images and some custom CSS for these little uh, code snippets and stuff like that. But uh, it's, it's just minified images, and all of the posts are very 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 small these pages are like 50 uh 50 to 200 kilobytes so the pages load extremely fast but uh the way that i'm achieving this like i said it's a wordpress site and this is actually being hosted on an extremely inexpensive box this is an f1 micro instance on google cloud um if you're looking for cheap vps hosting i recommend that you try out google cloud because it's really 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 inexpensive you pay just for what you use if you're using aws for a small like personal website like this in terms of what you're paying for you could like not that five dollars a month for cloud hosting is very expensive but my my monthly bill is like a dollar fifty canadian using Google Cloud, which is super fast, but the, the the instance is not very powerful. But yeah, buck fifty to host all my websites is pretty good. So let's jump behind the scenes here and explain some optimizations. Uh, yeah, I have it just a WP admin. Don't hack my site, please. Uh, plugins that I have installed on WordPress, like obviously if you're not using WordPress, uh, these optimizations and stuff, you can just do them all by hand, but uh, minification of JavaScript and stuff like that. If you're using a content platform like WordPress, then you can just have it auto minify things and auto smush images when you upload them. So uh, for my image optimizer, I'm using eww image optimizer. All these image optimizers want you to uh, pay for them too. They all have like some pro version that shrinks things by an additional uh, 10 bytes or something. Uh, this one's pretty good. I also used Smush. This one just seems to be uh, really lightweight and the UI doesn't have a million options. Like you can switch to uh, WebMs or not WebMs, WebPs. You can switch to WebP and try and save a couple extra bytes like that too. Uh, this is my custom, well, not custom, this is how I'm embedding the code snippets into my website with this prismatic. Uh, and then W3 total cache is basically what's making me get such a high score on GT metrics. There are other um, caching and smushers and stuff like that for your site to make it load faster, but I really recommend this one. This one's been the most performant for me. Uh, also, if you're trying to get faster loads, I highly recommend you look into Redis for uh, your page loads. You don't even need that big of a Redis cache, but yeah, like 200 uh, megs or something as a Redis cache that serves all of your stuff is quite good. It speeds things up by a lot. So uh, in here, I just have it minifying all of my CSS. And JavaScript, for JavaScript minification, you might need to do some additional tweaking in terms of the order. Uh, I have this on manual mode. If you don't have any uh, specialty plugins or stuff, you can usually just use the manual mode, but uh, with the, or use the automatic mode. If you're using manual mode, for me at least, with the automatic mode, jQuery wasn't being minified before these prismatic things. 
uh, which caused some errors because Prismatic relies on jQuery and if it doesn't have the jQuery library installed, then it says, I don't know how to work. So most of these uh, set to non-blocking defer, which is one of the main things in the page speed that you go here with the uh, defer parsing of JavaScript. All these other things like the landing page redirects, no inline CSS. I, I think I have a tiny bit. Uh, WordPress likes to do your theme. If you have a custom background in WordPress, uh, it actually does inline it. I don't know if it's in head. It might be in body. Oh my goodness, please. Uh, yeah, see, this is this is uh, in the head still, but this is pretty inline, right? This is not part of a sheet. This it would be easier if it was just appended to one of these sheets, but not really that big of a deal. So over here, yeah, minify CSS. It does a great job with all of these things. The W3 total cache, but. Like I said, most people run into an issue. My homepage doesn't use a CDN. Uh, with this final Y slow um, with the cookie free domain. So what I'm using is a key CDN. The reason why I'm using them is because they advertised they were doing some, uh, it's like a 14 day free thing. You don't even have to put in a credit card. Um, so there's no billing information required. I just push all my assets to a push storage. If you've never used one of these CDNs before, you can either do a push or a pull. A pull, you set the URL of your website and it'll automatically scrape it and see what assets are being required. Uh, so it'll automatically download your CSS files, your JavaScript files, all of the things that show up when you... Uh... If we go here, we'll have to reload the page, but if you go to network, all of these things, these show up in your waterfall graph in uh, GT metrics as well. But for most of these, when it scrapes your page, it sees all of these assets that it needs to download, stores them all, and then gives you a custom URL that can host these. Another problem that I ran into, I thought, you know, what would be cool is if I had a cdn.downthecrop.xyz, which is my URL, obviously. Uh, and there's an error with that too. If I do a cdn.downthecrop.xyz and set a new HT access in Apache, uh, making sure that it's actually cookie free, the like the fully qualified domain root domain there, because it's just a subdomain of downthecrop.xyz, it just has the prepended CDN. Uh, it already knows that the root the root uh, URL there of downthecrop.xyz has assets that aren't cookie free. And because of that, the CDN URL also is considered non-cookie free, even though the headers actually don't contain cookies, which seems to be an issue with GT metrics, uh, not realizing that because I've set up a, a cookie free subdomain and thought that that would work for me, but it didn't. I needed to ultimately go here and uh, for the Y slow to, to work properly, I needed to use a real CDN. So these guys are free. It's not, I'm not sponsored by this or anything. Uh, but if you want to just test out how your CDN uh, page score would be, you can set up something like this. And for me, at least in W3 Total Cache, all I have to do is go down here to CDN and uh, turn it on or off. Right now it's disabled because I uh, wanted to demo something. So here's the, here's the score with the CDN enabled, right? All of my, if we go to the waterfall, it's requesting these from DTC. Uh, KXCDN or key CDN. So they give you a little domain like this. But if we clear my Redis cache and retest it, we'll actually see that the page loads faster. So uh, all I've done is disabled my CDN and then I retest this. Hopefully, I don't have to clear Cloudflare. Most of you are probably already using Cloudflare, which is where you run into this issue in the first place. So here's the same page. Uh, I'm actually loading faster, and I now get a 98 because da da da. Not using cookie-free domains for all these assets. So the problem with this, obviously, like we look at the load time, it's 1.3, and this is without it being cached. If I if I reload this again, Redis will have built the cache, and then I load it again, and it's actually going to be faster. So 
I'm probably going to be leaving my website like this. I don't need to use uh, an additional service like this because my page is actually loading faster without a, sorry, I have this one open just to show this. Uh, it's actually loading faster without a CDN than it is loading with a CDN. And that may just be because key CDN is kind of crappy and slow because if we looked back at that old report in the waterfall, most of it was actually waiting on key CDN to uh, return the data that was being requested. So we're just gonna rerun this one more time. I think that we can get it below one second. Uh, my server is, the VPS is located like central US. So if we retest this on central US with GT metrics, I'll get a faster score anyway. Okay, so we got one second, okay? That's pretty good. And as for other, th uh, if I test with a closer server, Okay, this this one still shows the uh, this one still shows the waterfall graph with it. Okay, so we look at the CDN. If you're using a faster CDN uh, that you're actually going to be paying more for, I don't know if it's just because Key CDN's free tier uh, has extra latency attached to it, which I definitely could understand. But uh, you look at this receiving right. That's exceptionally slow compared to. Uh, we'll just go back to the one that I just tested. We look at the waterfall, the receiving is so much faster, right? 45 milliseconds versus 500 milliseconds. And that's a dedicated CDN with no cookie headers or with no, uh, yeah, with no cookies in the headers. So we're gonna retest this for US just to show that it's a lot faster. 1.3 seconds um, on the, 1.3 seconds using cookie free domains. And then we load again. And this would probably be like 400, 800 milliseconds, 800. And that's with a 98, right? So this just goes to show if you're getting 100 out of 100, uh, yeah, you've got a good score on GT metrics, but ultimately all the optimizations that really matter are over here. And if your server is actually slow, like my, my server is plenty strong enough to, to return the assets that are being requested. Look at these timings, right? This is not bad at all. Uh, and I'm getting dinged by a Y slow, even though when I use cookie free domains, my site loads five seconds or yeah, 500 milliseconds slower. So, uh, I recommend this, uh, extension, this W3 total cache. I'm not sponsored by them either, but, uh, W3 total cache, it's very, very advanced in terms of, uh, what it lets you do. If you're looking to speed up page loads, I recommend also using Redis if you have the option to do that. If you're using like a cPanel or something, you might not be able to do that. But if you're using uh, a Linux LAMP stack or Nginx or something, using Redis should be pretty simple. Uh, make sure that you minify your, minify your stuff. All of the things within this page speed, you can modify these pretty simply if you know uh, web dev stuff. It'll, it'll take you some time to get them fully optimized. but Within this Y slow, I think that this is a total uh, false positive thing. My site loads substantially faster. 500 milliseconds is pretty quick, especially for a page that loads in 800 milliseconds, right? Uh, you're looking at nearly doubling the time. So uh, as for this cookie free domains, if you wanna fix it, use a CDN uh, to distribute these cookie free. Uh, you can use something free like key CDN for uh, 14 days and see what score you get. But ultimately, I think that this is how I'm going to leave my site as a not 100 out of 100 because it loads faster just without uh, additional things that I have to pay for and manage. So uh, that's it, guys. I hope that this was eye opening in terms of why slow scores and stuff. But uh, have a good one. Peace.